हेलो फ्रेंड्स माय नेम इज विकास सो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग सम ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट करंट अफेयर्स ऑफ द टॉपिक नेशनल अफेयर्स ऑफ द फरवरी मंथ द सेशन विल बी हाईली इंपॉर्टेंट सो डू पे अटेंशन टिल द एंड सो फ्रेंड्स विल स्टार्ट विद अ सेशन बट बिफोर दैट वी हैव समथिंग इंपॉर्टेंट टू टेल यू अबाउट सो फ्रेंड्स वी हैव एन ऐप बाय द नेम कैरियस क्लाउड व्हिच यू कैन गो एंड डाउनलोड थ्रू द प्ले स्टोर इन योर एंड्रॉइड फोन्स दिस ऐप विल हेल्प यू इन बूस्टिंग योर प्रिपरेशन वंस यू हैव डाउनलोड दिस ऐप यू कैन गो एंड लॉग इन विद योर जीमेल और गूगल आई इन दिस एप्लीकेशन एंड वंस यू हैव लॉगड इन देन यू विल बी ट्रांसफर टू दिस पेज हेयर ऑन दिस पेज यू विल बी एबल टू सी होम ऑल कोर्सेज माई कोर्सेज एंड डाउट सेशंस ऑल्सो सो इन द कोर्सेज इफ वी टॉक टू यू इन द कोर्सेज इन आर इफ यू परचेज कोर्स फ्रॉम अस वी विल बी प्रोवाइडिंग यू विद मल्टीपल मटीरियल फॉर योर प्रिपरेशन मटीरियल सच एज योर डेली करंट अफेयर्स योर वीकली करंट अफेयर्स योर मंथली करंट अफेयर्स इन डेली वी विल बी प्रोवाइडिंग यू विद ट्वेंटी क्वेश्चन क्विज an ebook that is in your pdf formats of the questions of that particular day then will be providing you in weekly with the same 50 question quiz that will be a compiled and important 50 questions and also will be providing you a compiled pdf of the weekly current affairs then in the question answer format also it will be a very helpful pdf and similarly for monthly also will be providing you important monthly current affairs on a monthly basis so the same content you will be revising maximum number of times and it will help you in your preparation we'll also provide material related to your banking and awareness also and apart from that we'll be covering all important topics such as your apps and web portal important days books and authors national affairs international affairs sports defense awards obituary important days and what not everything will be covered in this topic wise by me only so apart from that we also provide state wise current affairs that will also help you to prepare for the regional exams coming all right so friends this is the app that you should definitely go and download if you want to step up your preparation apart from that if you want to purchase any course from our application then to help you out will be providing you an additional 10% discount if you use vikas 10 code i repeat if you want to avail an extra 10% discount on all the uh, purchase you made through the application you will be provided with 10% discount on the purchase by using this code that is your vikas 10 welcome back friends so let's start with the video The first topic that we'll be discussing is about a geopark. But what is a geopark? First of all, let's see this. Geopark is a specified area, all right, that is for protection of the heritage as well as to promote the sustainable development in that particular area and help the people to live a better life. So that is generally a geopark. So recently, recently India has set up their first geopark, and where they have came up with this first geopark, remember. first geo park of india it is located in which state question will be asked it is located in madhya pradesh and in madhya pradesh to where is it located it is located at jabalpur all right if asked it is located first geo park of india is located on the banks of what river it is located on the banks of narmada river all right highly important mark this then remember the gsi that is your geological survey of india ministry of mines has approved the setup of this first geo park of india at madhya pradesh jabalpur district and it is on the banks of the narmada river and we saw what is geo park a geo park is an area that protects the geological heritage and promotes sustainable development of the people living in that particular area all right remember this geo park that is in the jabalpur district of mp was already in the unesco geo heritage tentative list for the conservation of the natural heritage all right so this was the india's first geo park now if i ask you tell me where is spituk guster festival celebrated this festival is celebrated in the ladakh region it is celebrated in the spitu guster festival is celebrated in the ladakh region highly important all right then apart from this tell me recently we saw elections in the punjab state what was the mascot you have to name me the mascot of the punjab chief electoral office of punjab chief 
electoral office what was the mascot of the punjab chief electoral office tell me you will have 10 seconds to comment below the answer every time i ask you a particular question all right so the correct answer will be shera shera was the name of the mascot that was the mascot of the punjab chief electoral office all right and spitu guster festival was celebrated by which area in or it was celebrated in which area it was celebrated in ladakh moving on as you can see here spitu guster festival it is celebrated in the ladakh highly important pay attention can be asked in your question but what is the reason that this self festival is celebrated and what is the day on which this festival was celebrated remember this is a two day festival celebrated in ladakh all right and why it is celebrated and once first of all on what two days it is celebrated it was celebrated on 30th and 31st of january it started on 30th january all right and it was a two day long festival all right and remember this two day annual celebration of the ladakhi culture and traditional heritage is celebrated on 30 to 31st of january it is a celebration of peace and prosperity all right the locals believe that this festival the harsh winter weather starts getting warmer and pleasant that means once they have say are they are celebrating this festival on 30th and 31st of january after this festival is over the weather starts getting warmer and pleasant so if we revise it once more spiti guster festival observed in ladakh it is a two day long festival it is started on 30th january it was celebrated on 30th and 31st of january two day long festival and the festival the uh, the locals of the particular area believe that the, this festival is celebrated and once this festival is over the harsh winter weather starts getting warmer and pleasant next next we'll be talking about torgya festival Torgya festival recently began in the Arunachal Pradesh highly important mark this and in Arunachal Pradesh too it was observed in what monastery it was observed in the Togeng monastery this festival was celebrated so two question can be asked first of all they will be asking in which state the Torgya festival was observed it was in Arunachal Pradesh second will be asked that in which ministry the Torgya festival was celebrated it was in the towing monastery that this festival was celebrated highly important so torgya festival is of arunachal pradesh and if we are talking about spitu guster festival it is of ladakh next as you can see here a rifle what is this this is a ak203 ak203 as we know there is an rifle by the name ak47 similarly ak43 this recently india received 70000 ak203 from russia this was the first batch or you can say the initial batch of the ak203 that was ordered by india and to russia who delivered this who manufactured it it was manufactured and delivered to india by russia and how many did we a 203 rifles received they were 70000 this was the initial batch all right next here we'll be talking about ncw what is ncw ncw stands for national commission for women basically this commission is working toward the upliftment and providing safeguards for women all right so if we are talking about this ncw recently we saw the 30th foundation day of national commission of women can you tell me on which day do we observe the foundation day for the national commission of women we observe this on 31st of january and this was the 30th edition you can say for the national commission of women apart from this as we saw that this is basically to review the constitutional and legal safeguards for women you should know the theme of this national commission foundation day of the national commission for women the theme was she the change maker important this was the theme for the 30th foundation day of the national commission women and this was addressed by also remember prime minister narendra modi ji all right one more thing from this tell me 
Tata Sky has rebranded. That is a dish or you can say satellite TV provider. This Tata Sky was has rebranded itself to Tata Play. Another important question. Moving on. Next. Next, we'll be talking about Hosala temples in Karnataka. Recently, India has finalized the nomination of Hosala temples in Karnataka for the World Heritage List of the year 2022 to 2023. Highly important question. We'll be looking at the name of the temples that you should know. Belur, Helebid and Somnath Pura. These are the three temples of Hosala. The sacred ensembles of Hosala in Karnataka have been finalized for the nomination of the UNESCO World Heritage List for the year 2022 to 2023. Where is the headquarter of UNESCO? This is located in Paris. So coming back again, where are the Hosala temples located? They are located in Karnataka. All right. Three temples of Hosala temples have been included or have been selected or has been normalized for the UNESCO's World Heritage List for the year 2022 to 2023. Highly important. All right. And what are the name of these three Hosala temples? Belur, Helbid and Somnathpura. These three temples that are of Hosala temples that are located in Karnataka have been finalized for the India's nomination of the UNESCO's World Heritage List for the year 2022 to 2023. All right. Next. Tell me. Mandu festival. Mandu festival. Where do we observe this Mandu festival? This was observed in the Dhar district of MP Madhya Pradesh. One more important that I just remembered. Mandu festival is observed in the Dhar district of Madhya Pradesh. Highly important. You should know. All right. If I am asking you, tell me then India's first OECM site. First. OECM site of India. Tell me India's first OEM site. This is Aravali Biodiversity Park. Aravali Biodiversity Park is the India's first OECM site. And where is this Aravali Biodiversity Park located? It is located in Gurugram. Also remember ISA, that is your International Solar Alliance headquarters, is also located in Gurugram. Moving on. See, just I remember and here it is Mandu festival or Mandu festival is celebrated in which state? It is celebrated in Madhya Pradesh and in which district also you should know it is observed in the Dhar district of Madhya Pradesh. This is the Mandu festival. Moving on. Next, we'll be talking about Global Center for Excellence in affordable and clean energy which were this was launched where this was launched at the iit dharwat i repeat we are talking about global center for excellence in affordable and clean energy and where is this located this is located at iit dharwat as the name suggests the global center of excellence in affordable and clean energy that means here research will be conducted in affordable and clean energy so that we can boost the economy by providing the clean energy to the people and this clean energy will help us to reduce the pollution in the environment also all right it will help us to protect our environment and make our environment carbon neutral so coming back if we are talking question will be global center of excellence in affordable and clean energy is located at what location it is located at iit dharwat all right and one more thing, if I ask you, where is this IIT Dharwat? This is the area, basically location of that particular global center of excellence. If in return it is asked, you have to name the state where this global center of excellence in affordable and clean energy is located, then the state will be Karnataka. All right, it is located in Karnataka. Next, next we'll be talking about Bharat Dynamics Limited is set to provide anti-tank missiles to Indian Army. I repeat, Indian Army has ordered Bharat Dynamics Limited to manufacture anti-tank missiles. And what are the name of these anti-tank missiles? It is Conqueror. Important. All right. 
वॉट इज द नेम ऑफ द एंटी टैंक मिसाइल दैट विल बी डिलीवर्ड बाय भारत डायनेमिक्स लिमिटेड टू इंडियन आर्मी द नेम ऑफ द मिसाइल इज कॉन्क्रस नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वॉट कॉन्क्रस द एंटी टैंक मिसाइल्स आर डेवलप्ड बाय विच ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फॉर इंडियन आर्मी दे आर डेवलप्ड बाय भारत डायनेमिक्स लिमिटेड थर्ड क्वेश्चन कॉन्क्रस दैट इज द एंटी टैंक मिसाइल will be developed by bharat dynamics limited and they will be provided to what force in india it will be provided to indian army highly important question all right next next will be talking about india and nepal they both together have signed a memorandum of understanding to construct a bridge over the mahakali river highly important can you tell me where is this mahakali river and another thing that you need to remember that india and nepal recently india will be providing their upi to nepal all right the first country to which india will be deploying their upi is nepal and recently they are saying that india and nepal together there will be there was an mou for the construction of a bridge over what river over the mahakali river so also important mark this next next we'll be talking about gail gas authority that was formerly known as gas authority india limited it is a first started a first of its kind project there they will be mixing hydrogen with natural gas all right i repeat gail has started a project where they will be mixing hydrogen with natural gas all right highly important so you know this project now that who started this mixing of hydrogen and natural gas it was done by gale now tell me the location where this plant will be uh, manufactured or where this plant will is located it is located at indore where is indore indore is located at madhya pradesh if you remember about indore then you should know first bio cng plant is also located at mp indore all right and now a first of its kind project that will be mixing hydrogen with natural gas this project is also located at the indore region and who started this mixing of hydrogen with natural gas it is a project of gail g a i l highly important next next we'll be talking about india's first bullet train this question will be asked that India's first bullet train will be running between which two locations it will be running between Mumbai to Ahmedabad all right now the news is here that first station between Mumbai and Ahmedabad that is ready for this high speed railway is or this for this bullet train is Surat Surat is the first station that is ready to or that has been built for this first bullet train of india that will be running between mumbai and ahmedabad mhsr what is this mhsr stands for mumbai ahmedabad high speed railway the construction of the first bullet train in india which will connect ahmedabad to mumbai this project the construction of this started in the september 2017 then remember the whole network between ahmedabad and mumbai is of 508 km long all right this bullet train in india is being built with the help of japan that means the country that is helping india to build their first bullet train and the linking between ahmedabad and mumbai will be which country it is japan and they are it is saying that this project was started in september 2017 and it is expected to be completed by the year 2020 if we are talking about bullet train then you should know the speed of the train also this speed, uh, this bullet train will operate at a speed of 320 km per hour to 350 km per hour this is the highest maximum design speed of the train all right then it is saying that earlier the time travel between mumbai and ahmedabad was 7 to 8 hours with the building of this bullet train with the operation of this bullet train it will be reduced to 2 to 3 hours so all the information that you did know related to this bullet train has been covered here coming back if we revise mumbai ahmedabad is the location between which india's first bullet train will be operating surat is the first station that is built and ready if we are talking about bullet train it will it can go up to a speed of 320 to 350 km per hour the expected time to which this project will be ready is 2022 
India is uh, India is being held with this bullet train by which country it is Japan that is helping India to develop this bullet train and the time period that used to take earlier seven to eight hours between Ahmedabad and Mumbai has been reduced to two to three hours with the help of this bullet train now. Next, next we'll be talking about Powerthon. Highly important. Mark this. Powerthon is basically a hackathon only that is providing innovative solutions to the power technology. That means coming up with various innovative solutions with the. Then the question that can be asked that is related to Powerthon is that who launched Powerthon? It was launched by our mini Union Minister of Power. He is R K Singh launched the Powerthon. All right for enabling advanced technology in power distribution. Consider this related to your hackathon only. All right, moving on. Next, next we'll be talking about intensified mission Indradhanush. 4.0 was recently launched by Dr. Mansukh Mandaviji. Highly important. Intensified emission in the Dhanush. First of all, remember this is related to immunization. All right. The main focus here is universal immunization of this intensified mission in the Dhanush IMI 4.0. Then who launched this? It was launched by Dr. Mansukh Mandaviji. What was launched? IMI 4.0 was launched. In question, it can be given IMI 1, IMI only IMI, IMI 2.0. But you need to remember it was intensified mission in Dhanush 4.0. Where this was launched? It was launched in New Delhi. All right, and it is basically a universal immunization program. And this 4.0 targets to protect children and pregnant women from severe disease. I repeat, IMI 4.0 targets. And protects children and pro uh, pregnant women from severe disease. All right. Then remember, health minister started stated that India operates largest immunization program globally that covers around thirty to twenty say uh, thirty pregnant uh, thirty million pregnant women and twenty six million children every year under universal immunization program. So this intensified in mission in the IMI four point zero targets. Children and pregnant women to protect them from severe disease. This is this comes under the universal immunization program, as I said earlier. And who launched this mission? IMI 4.0. It was launched by Dr. Mansukh Mandaviji. Highly important. Moving on. Next, next we'll be talking about Aqua Map. What is Aqua Map? Say we are living in India here. This Aqua Map. I'm just giving a brief example here. This will tell us that in what area we have a supply of proper water. We have underground water in what area from where we can supply water. As we know, water is coming from Brahmaputra, Ganga River. They are cleaned and then provided to the families. So similarly, underground water to map these water resources. This aqua map was launched by Center to solve India's water crisis. And who launched this? It was launched by IIT Madras. What was launched? An aqua map. It what is aqua map? Aqua map is basically to map the water bodies and water resources in India. And this is basically to solve India's water crisis. Basically, water crisis is not in India only. You have even earlier we used to read the report of World Health Organization stating that on a global scale there are large population in the world which is not getting even one time proper water to drink. They don't have the clean water for drinking they use the same water for drinking they are using the same water for their bathing purposes and other sanitation purposes all right so there is a high scarcity of clean and proper water to drink in the world for that same reason to avoid the water crisis in india aqua map was launched by whom it was launched by iit madras next next you need to remember a direct information that india is the fifth largest exporter of millets i repeat india is the fifth largest exporter of millets in the world highly important you need to remember the data next next we'll be talking about a central government scheme by the name smile highly important scheme market this scheme of central government by the name smile is to provide welfare for the transgender people those who are engaged in the act of begging 
यू शुड नो द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ स्माइल ऑल्सो हाईली इंपॉर्टेंट स्माइल स्टैंड फॉर सपोर्ट फॉर मार्जिनलाइज इंडिविजुअल्स फॉर लाइवलीहुड एंड एंटरप्राइज वेयर वॉज दिस स्कीम लॉन्च दिस स्कीम वॉज लॉन्च एट न्यू डेली विद एन आउटली दैट मीन्स द अमाउंट दैट विल बी स्पेंट ऑन दिस विल बी अराउंड थ्री हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी फाइव करोड रुपीज फॉर द ट्वेंटी वन टू ट्वेंटी टू दैट मीन्स फॉर द फिजिकल ईयर ऑफ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू टिल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सिक्स us 365 crore rupees will be spent on this smile project that is basically aiming the transgender people who are working or who are engaged in the act of begging all right which now comes to the important question which ministry launched this smile this smile scheme was launched by the ministry of social justice and empowerment and if the name of person is asked to you that who is the person who launched this scheme this center scheme by the name smile it was launched by dr virendra kumar who is the union minister for the ministry of social science uh, social justice and empowerment highly important coming back what is the aim of this it is basically helping and providing welfare measures to the transgender people who are engaged in the act of begging and the name of the scheme is smile started by the ministry of social justice and empowerment launched by dr virendra kumar and full form of smile is support for marginalized individuals for livelihood and enterprise and where was this launched it was launched at new delhi with an outlay of 365 crore rupees from time period 21 22 to 25 26 moving on next next we'll be talk, talking about india and australia they both together have signed an mou that is your memorandum of understanding for tourism corporation that means to enhance the tourism between the two countries recently india and australia have signed an mou to increase the tourism all right and it is in the mou for the tourism corporation all right to increase tourism in both the countries this memorandum of understanding was signed between india and australia so if asked related to tourism which two countries signed an mou india and australia signed an mou all right apart from this tell me where is the statue of equality located statue of equality where is this located statue of equality it is located in hyderabad i repeat where is this located it is located in hyderabad statue of equality next next we'll be talking about first color souvenir coin on panchtantra was recently launched by whom it was launched by our finance minister who is nirmala sitaraman i repeat finance minister nirmala sitaraman has launched first color a souvenir coin that is based on panchtantra i repeat that is based on panch tantra highly important mark this first color souvenir coin was based on panch tantra launched by our finance minister nirmala sitaraman two three questions convert from this image itself if you are noting them down highly important all right coming back now when was this launched first color coin this first color coin was launched on the 17th foundation day of security printing and minting corporation of india limited i repeat this first color coin that is based on panchtantra was launched on the 17th foundation day of security printing and minting corporation of india limited all right the event was virtually chaired by whom it was virtually chaired by our finance minister nirmala sitaraman highly important who launched it it was launched by finance minister nirmala sitaraman only it is a first color souvenir coin that is based on panchtantra all right next mark this a static gk question then highest denomination note that was ever printed by the reserve bank of india what was the note it was a 10000 rupees note that was printed in the year 1938 and again this was printed in 1954 apart from this if we are talk talking about notes then remember 1 rupee note will have the sign of that will it will have the signature of finance secretary and all other notes other notes will have the sign of the governor of rbi highly important data i repeat 
वन रुपी नोट है विल हैव और बियर द साइन ऑफ फाइनेंस सेक्रेटरी एंड ऑल द अदर नोट एक्सेप्ट वन रुपी नोट विल हैव द साइन ऑफ गवर्नर ऑफ आर बी आई ऑल राइट मूविंग ऑन नेक्स्ट रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी इज टू रिप्लेस डीजल इन एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर बाय द ईयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर से इज द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया यू हैव टू रिमेंबर हेयर द सेक्टर इन विच वी आर टॉकिंग एंड द डेड लाइन और द ईयर दैट वॉज मैंशन सो रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी विल बी रिप्लेसिंग डीजल इन द एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर वे आर आर वी यूजिंग डीजल इन द एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर वी आर यूजिंग दैम इन द जनरेटर्स टू पावर द मशीन टू ट्रैक्टर्स एंड वेरियस अदर मशीन सो दैट द एग्रीकल्चर कैन बिकम the process of doing this agriculture for sowing or basically for providing electricity to provide irrigation in the field providing water there and for all other things so this is the target of the government of india to replace diesel by electricity or basically you can re replace diesel by renewable energy in what sector in agriculture sp sector specifically by the year 2020 four so question will be asked in such a way they will be asking that recently government of india is to replace diesel by renewable energy in what sector by the year 2024 so it will be replaced in agriculture sector similarly they will be saying that renewable energy will replace diesel in agriculture sector what is the target year that was given by the government of india so the target year is the year 2024 here you can see another thing that who gave this data it was given by or who provided this commitments it was provided by the rk singh who is our union power minister i repeat in a virtual meeting that was held to discuss the role of states and union territories rk singh who is our union power minister pointed that india will achieve a target of zero diesel in the agriculture sector and it will replace the fossil fuel with renewable energy by the year 2024 all right and the objective is to ensure the state's participation in fulfilling india's climate commitments and each state and union territory can be assigned energy saving targets next highly important as we know india first of all you should know india has banned the import of drones india has banned the import of drones except for research and development defense and security purposes that means no indian civilian that means normal any person cannot buy for fun the drones that are made outside india so you can be only able to purchase the drones that are made in india only from now onwards this is the data that was released by india first thing next thing if i ask you first drone mela it was held in gwalior mp where uh, gwalior is in madhya pradesh so first drone mela was held in gwalior mp another thing if you remember recently 1000 drones made a display by making various shapes and various signals into the sky who did this this was done by whom this was done by bot labs all right it was done by bot labs coming back india has banned the import of drones except for research and development defense and security purposes all right next next we'll be talking about the longest tunnel that is the t49 tunnel i repeat which is the longest tunnel it is the t49 tunnel all right this will be connecting udhampur usb remember this term usb you use your usb in your uh computers and your laptops to store data similarly remember this usb usb is udhampur shrinagar and baramulla these three locations will be connected using a rail link project and they will be having one tunnel that is the longest tunnel by the name t49 all right recently the main t49 tunnel between sambar and aprinchala station of the katra banihal station in udhampur shrinagar baramulla rail link project this is the longest indian railway has been connected all right the longest tunnel of the indian railway that has been connected which is the longest tunnel it is t49 remember this it is the name similar to a terminator movie those terminators t49 all right remember it like this so it is a project of usb you should know what is usb udhampur shrinagar baramulla rail link project and they will be having the longest tunnel that is t49 all right this tunnel is of 
फाइव एट किलोमीटर लॉन्ग एंड हैज बिकम द लॉन्गेस्ट टनल सरपासिंग द पीर प्रांजल टनल ऑफ इलेवन पॉइंट टू किलोमीटर ऑल राइट सो कमिंग बैक विच इज द लॉन्गेस्ट टनल और विच प्रोजेक्ट इज हैविंग द लॉन्गेस्ट टनल टी फोर्टी नाइन इज द लॉन्गेस्ट टनल एंड द उधमपुर श्रीनगर बारामूला रेल लिंक प्रोजेक्ट इज हैविंग दिस लॉन्गेस्ट टनल वॉट इज द लेंथ ऑफ इट इट इज ट्वेल्व पॉइंट सेवन फाइव एट किलोमीटर लॉन्ग एंड इट हैज द सरपास पीर प्रांजल टनल विच वॉज अर्लियर इलेवन पॉइंट टू किलोमीटर लॉन्ग नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट न्यू इंडिया लिटरेसी प्रोग्राम highly important this new india literacy program basically focus on adult education and they will be focusing on this by the year 2022 to 2027 they will be spending that means this budget is of 5 years that is new india literacy program it was approved by the government of india and a total of 1037 crore rupees will be spent on this new india literacy program that will focus on adult education and among this 1037 crore 7700 crore will be spent by central government and the state share will be 337 crore rupees so two to three things you need to remember nilp it will be also mentions if in question nilp what is nilp new india literacy program this is a scheme for adult education estimated budget for 5 year that will it will be operating from 2022 to 2027 The estimated budget for these five years will be one thousand thirty nine seven crore rupees. Among this, seven hundred crore rupees will be the share of center, and three hundred thirty seven rupees will be the share of the state government. All right, and where what important thing that you need to focus here? This this N I L P will be focusing on adult education for how many years? For five years, from twenty twenty two to twenty twenty seven. Which is the ministry that has approved this N I L P? it is your ministry of education that has approved this nilp this nilp also remember is known as nav bharat literacy program nav bharat literacy program this is for 5 years from 2022 to 27 all right and this program will be focusing on adult education this is the important thing here that what is the aim of this nilp the main aim is adult education and this is also known as nav bharat literacy program then another thing that you need to remember here is that the ministry of education has replaced the term adult education with the education of all all right this is also important moving on next we'll be talking about fintech open hackathon first of all you should know what is fintech we saw hackathon hackathon is basically an event where a problem statement will be provided to the uh, students those who are participating and within a given time frame they have to solve the problem with innovative ideas all right they have to come up with innovative solutions to solve that particular state problem statement given to them so this is your hackathon then what is fintech fintech stands for finance and tech that means fin for finance and tech is for technology so mixing finance along with technology to find various innovative solutions in the fintech area in the finance region a recent hackathon was organized by whom so two organization that are important you should know niti aayog along with phone pay i repeat niti aayog and phone pay they have together organized a fintech open hackathon that means anyone can take participation in this can participate in this all they have to do is find innovative solutions to these financing problems the problem that will be provided to those students by the companies or the organizers all right so coming back who launched this fintech open hackathon it was launched by niti aayog along with phone pay so two organization phone pay plus niti aayog all right and this was an open hackathon that means anyone can come and participate in this this will provide opportunity for innovators digital creators developers from all over the india to think ideate and code next is an easy information you can remember prime minister narendra modi recently flagged off 100 drones that is by the name kisan drones to spray pesticides in farms across india as i told you that all the drones will be made in india only now and drones can be used and it is an effective way of spraying pesticides and fertilizers various other things in the farms so in order to demonstrate that recently narendra modi demonstrated by flagging off 100 drones to spray pesticides in farms across india 
एंड वॉट वॉज दिस स्कीम और प्रोजेक्ट ऑन किसान ड्रोन्स नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट एज आई टोल्ड यू दैट फर्स्ट बायो सी एन जी प्लांट वेर इट इज सेटअप इट विल बी सेटअप इन इंदौर एम पी एंड दिस बायो सी एन जी प्लांट इज नेम्ड एज गोबर धन हाईली इंपॉर्टेंट ऑल राइट गोबर धन ओके अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस रिमेंबर इट इज द एशियाज बिगेस्ट बायो सी एन जी प्लांट then the second thing you can remember we saw this it is a just a revision that hydrogen will be mixed with the natural gas and this is a first of its kind project that was started by which organization it was started by gail and where is this this is also in indoor only so all the plant uh, all the plants that are related to your bio cng or your natural gas that is related to renewable energy they are all situated in indoor madhya pradesh here you can see we are talking about what is the name of the project it is gobar dhan what is gobar dhan it is the asia's largest bio cng plant asia's largest bio cng plant and where is this being set up it is in indore indore is in mp all right next next we'll be talking about eastern bridge 6 Six stands for that is the sixth edition of this exercise. This was conducted in Jodhpur. Where is Jodhpur? Jodhpur is in Rajasthan. So where is Jodhpur? Jodhpur is in Rajasthan. Now coming back, Eastern Bridge exercise. This Eastern Bridge is exercise is conducted between which two countries? It is conducted between India and Oman. All right. This exercise, Eastern Bridge six, is conducted between India and. oman and where the location of this exercise was jodhpur rajasthan and it was a sixth edition of this exercise as you can see the aircraft behind these all army personals navy uh, air force personals so remember this exercise is conducted between the air force of these two countries of indian air force and oman uh, royal air force of rome oman all right that means the air force of these two countries participate in this exercise that is named as eastern bridge 6 apart from this important thing you can remember for this particular exercise because the questions are nowadays tricky so now you can be asked that from indian side which fighter jet took part so from indian air force it was sukhoi 30 mki jaguar and mirage 2000 these are the fighter jet that took part in the sixth edition of this eastern bridge exercise and from oman side that is the royal air force of oman f16 fighter jets took part in this exercise next next we'll be talking about the third anniversary of the launch of pm kisan scheme remember over 1.80 lakh crore rupees were transferred directly into the farmer families account by the government but what is this scheme why were they transferred under this scheme remember in one year 6000 rupees will be transferred to the bank account of the farmer in three easy installments all right that means an installment of 2000 each will be provided to the farmer in one year that means a total amount of 6000 will be provided to the farmer all right then remember this was the third anniversary of this pradhan mantri kisan samman nidhi scheme it was launched on 24th of february 3 years back this that means on 24th of february 2022 we observed the third anniversary of this scheme all right it was launched in the year 2019 and if we talk about this pm kisan scheme under this scheme 6000 per year in three easy installment will be provided to the people moving on next and the last information of this particular video and that is highly important is indian railway is the organization that is setting up the india's biggest world class wrestling academy all right remember this if it is asked the india's biggest world class wrestling academy who is setting up it or which ministry is setting up this this is the ministry of railways or indian railways is setting up the india's biggest world class wrestling academy and the location will be new delhi kisanjgan delhi will be the location of this india's biggest world class wrestling academy at kishanganj so friends this was our video all you have to do is like the video and if you want us to continue with this session if you want us to bring more such videos for your preparation and if you feel that you are gaining information you are benefiting from such type of videos all you have to do is comment below and tell us because your comments are highly appreciated also if you have any trouble regarding login or 
payment or any other issues then you can reach to us on our mail that is support at the rate of affairscloud.com or you can call us on the number 9677333862 and we'll resolve your issue as soon as possible also you should go and check our courses that are available at a very reasonable price and that will help you to boost your preparation